Hi guys, let's let's start by five fifteen. Let's wait for your classmates. Okay, so I think we can start now. Okay, so today uh, our subject is practical research too, I think. And it's a quantitative research. So our lesson for today, for already in the lesson for of chapter two, writing a research statement for quantitative research. Okay, so why is it necessary to formulate good research questions? Okay, so ano ba yung kahalagahan no, ng um, mga research questions? Okay, so after all this discussion, we should be able to identify the problem statements and research questions, determine the characteristic of good research questions, demonstrate the process of constructing 
and uh, constructing the statement of the problem. So, yon, uh, just uh, just for the for an introduction, yeah, you were given the opportunity to interview the president of the Philippines about any problem of the country. Okay, so yeah, um, you were given the, the opportunity to interview or ask questions about the problem of the country. So what kind of problem will you ask? What are the specific questions that you will ask to target this problem? Ano ano kaya yung mga questions na itatanong natin sa ating presidente? For now, si uh, President Rodrigo Duterte ang ating president. So ano yun yung mga question? What kind of problem? Bang anong problem yung itatanong natin? And uh, to be specific, ano yung questions? na itatanong natin to address the problem. Anyone? You can type in the chat box. Siguro kahit Tagalog, okay lang. Okay. Anyone? You know, it's a tayong topic. May isip ba tayong problem? Am I clear? Narinig ba yung mic ko? Yes po. Ayan. Ano, ano, ano kaya yung mga problem? Siguro isa sa mga itatanong natin is, since patapos na yung permit mo na, no? Ayun. Ano yung mga projects na iniin niyang sana magstay pa for the next year? So I think sana no next year yung tuition tuition fees ng mga state universities will stay free di ba? So I think yun yun yung um ano ano yung mga specific projects na na we wish no to stay or yung president ano yung project na na we wish niya magstay for the next term for the next president. Okay. Yun yung for me, no? Baka kayo meron kayong question for the president. Okay, so statement of the problem. Okay, statement of the problem. A statement of a problem is an integrative but brief discussion of the research problem, its context, and the questions of the study. So, dito na sa statement of the problem. Actually, para siyang a question na kinonvert into statement. Okay, so, for example, we want to know the financial literacy between pre and post uh, BPO employees. Okay, so instead of a question, we will convert it into a statement. For example, um, uh, the the difference between the uh, the financial literacy or financial behavior of the employees within Metro Manila. Ayan, so pading ganon, okay? So it is written as part of introduction and provides a concise overview of the topic in relation to the research question. So normally nga, nakikita na rin natin ito sa ano, eh, title mismo ng study natin. Okay, so a research question identifies the specific aspects of the, of the topic that the current study seeks to investigate and may vary depending on the extent of their focus. So usually kapag sa statement of the problems, in-state na rin natin ng mga variables na ginagamit natin. So for example, we want to know the effect of sunlight to the plants. Okay, so your statement might be uh, the, the effect of dim sunlight to the plant, the effect of um, no sunlight for the plant. So pwedeng ganun, no? yun, yun yung statement of the problem natin. So parang instead of question, we will convert it into statement. 
practice. So the statement of the problem usually begins with introducing your general problem statement, followed by specific research questions that aim to address the research problem. Okay, so syempre, nabagot yung mag-state kung ano, ba, kung ano ba yung problem na gusto natin isolve. Syempre, yung state muna natin kung saan natin, saan natin nakita yung problem, paano kaya siya nabuo yung problem, and, and through that, ano-ano yung mga specific questions na gusto natin isolve. Okay, so for example, uh, about poverty. So, maraming factors na pwede maka-affect maka sa poverty. So, you can choose at least one factor or three factors and you'll check kung ayun yung i-question natin. Kung, yun, uh, kung yung factors ba yun is really affecting the, the poverty and how can we solve that? So, categories of research questions, descriptive research questions. Descriptive research questions are used to describe certain patterns and focus on single and non-complex variables. It may also be, uh, be used to quantify or categorize variables in the study. So for example, how frequent is the production of essential oils for her herbal medicines? Uh, what criteria are considered by customer in choosing store. Okay, so yon um parang ako uh, baga dito no meron meron ng specific na sagot. Well, itong categories o uh, another category of research question the comparative. So meron naman tayong kino compare. Siguro you can uh, put or provide uh, options no na gusto mong i-compare. So comparative research questions are mainly used for comparing and constructing similarities and differences between groups and variables. So for example, you want to know the um, study engagement or the performance rather of the high school versus the senior high. So yun, pwede mong, pwede ganun. May two groups or may two variables. So like, may na pinocompare tayo yan. For example, what is the difference between the quality of natural and synthetic ink? How do Gen Z and millennials differ or differ in terms of dating attitudes? Okay, so uh, evaluative research questions. Evaluative research questions are formed to assess a particular observation or phenomenon based on established model or theory. So they are usually observed in organization, workplace, program, effective of projects. Usually, di ba sa business, yan, we want to evaluate the performance of the of our employees. So meron tayong mga criteria and then um, pwede yun through observation of the manager or that can be done by um, surveying or interviewing the customers. Okay. Explanatory research questions are formed to explain, predict change and or outcomes on observed relationship between variables and determine how one variable may have an effect on another. So for example, how does nurse intervention affect the patient's pre-surgery stress level? If ano, ano kaya yung activity no, na nakaka-affect sa um, stress level ng patients. Okay, how does employee employment tenure contribute to the productivity of workers? So, meron tayong tenureship one year to up to 20 years pa din. Yan, habang tumatagal ba, nagiging productive ba? Or um, usually ba lahat ng employees mo sa una lang productive? Tapos pag matagal-tagal na, hindi na productive? We want to check no, kung, kung um, 
Kung sa pagtaas ba ng tenorship, mataas din ba ang productivity? Okay. How are research questions related to the research problem? Okay, so characteristic of a good research question is really we are using SMART. Okay, so first, uh, let's check on the kung SMART ba. Parang SMART din. Yeah, normally SMART. Okay, so first, um, relevant, all research questions must be relevant to the, prob to the research problem. Dapat yung questions natin um, in line sa with the research problem. Usually nga kung ano yung research problem natin, parang kinoconvert na nga lang natin yun into research questions. The specific, it must not be too broad or too detailed. So as much as possible, magpipili lang tayo ng topic sa problem na nakikita natin or you can choose three three factors ganun lalo na kung marami siyang factors clear uh, research question should be used uh, should use simple language to be comprehensible meaning mas better kung naiintindihan ng mga readers especially kapag questioner yung ginagawa natin dapat mababasa siya or naiintindihan sa mga sasagot doon sa survey forms natin. Analytical, it does not simply ask yes or no questions but needs complex analysis. So you can use um, tawag dito, yung may mga rate 1 to 5, rate 2, 1 to 4, pwedeng ganun. Okay, measurable, uh, pwede rin namang timeable na tinatawag. Measurability of research questions indicate their feasibility and it and is measured through standardized tests or experiments, especially if we are going to use quantitative research. And so writing the research statement, the following guidelines may be observed in creating a well-structured research statement. Okay, so first, finalize the research topic. Yan, uh, mas better yun nga yung technique natin kapag pumipili tayo ng topic, mas better na tignan agad natin kung available ba yung resources natin. So kung available naman yung resources natin, yung mga uh, studies, no, na existing studies na na pwede natin uh, pagrelitan ng problem natin, ng topic natin. And then, inline pa siya doon sa forte natin. For example, kung ABM ka, better na mag-focus ka sa business. Kapag um, use, use ka, mag-focus ka sa um, social studies, ganun. And then kung EVL, such as yung ICT, so mag-focus tayo sa mga, of course, sa IT or technology or computer-related topics. And then, Kapag HE about, pwede rin naman silang gumamit ng food na pwede nilang uh, parang i-promote for entrepreneurship, pwede nga lang. Okay, so this will allow you to draft coherent statement of the problem and give you guided starting point and inquiry. So topic, for example, effects of Facebook photo likes on the self-esteem of teenagers. So we want to know, no? the effect of photo likes on the self-esteem of teenagers. So we have already two variables na nakikita natin dito, di ba? The likes and uh, Facebook photo likes and then self-esteem of teenagers. So independent meaning, syempre di naman natin na, na, na manipulate itong photo likes unless gumamit tayo ng 
um, ng Arabo, ng, ng foreigner, to boost our like, likes. But then, siyempre, di pa rin, wala pa rin yung satisfaction dun na nagustuhan ka talaga ng tao. No? And dependent variable, so let's check kung tumataas bang self-esteem ng self-esteem ng, ng mga teenagers, if tumataas din ba yung likes. Okay, so draft the research questions based on the finalized research topics. The draft of the research question will reflect the aspects that the research focused on. Ayan, so ano-ano kaya yung mga questions na pwede natin i-relate doon sa topic? So first, siguro ano, um, parang in, in one week, how many likes do you get? Ayan. So explanatory, how do Facebook hot likes affect the self-esteem of the female adolescents? So what are the factors that affect the number of photo likes? Okay. Kapag explanatory, ayan, um, we want to know the effect of likes to the self-esteem of female adolescents or, uh, or adults. And then if descriptive naman na research, we want to know the factors that affect the number of photo likes. Okay, so write the general problem statements, the general problem statements establish overall goal and the direction of the research. It should be um, contain the research topic, the main objective of the study, and the variables. Usually, di ba, um, kapag may research topic tayo, mas better na hanggang 2 to 3 lang yung objective natin. Okay, kasi kapag marami tayong objective, so sure, may hirapan tayo. Okay, even kapag nag-college na kayo or even master degree, they require lang na mag tayo sa 2 to 3 objectives. Actually, yung 3 nga madami ni Mas better kung one lang yung objective. Okay? So, yeah. The objective might be like this. So, this study aims to find out the effect of Facebook photo likes on the level of self-esteem of female senior high school student in XYZ school. Okay? So, if you want to use comparative study, so, pwedeng magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang at no, at long objectives. For example, we want to compare the self-esteem uh, of female senior high school and then the male senior high school based on photo likes. So that can be a comparative research. So we want to compare no, kung, kung naapektuhan ba ang male or kung sino ba sa dalawa yung mas naapektuhan, yung male ba or yung female. Okay? And then uh, we'll check if uh, there is a relationship between the male and female in terms of Facebook self, uh, Facebook photo likes. Okay, eh, parang baga iko compare na natin. That will be our uh, third objective. Okay, so. Number four, refine the statement of the problem. A refined statement of the problem includes the research questions and the potential benefits of the current study. Usually, ito naman, ayan, kasama rin para sa statement of the problem. So, after mong state kung paano mo na-discover yung problem, kung saan mo siya na-observe, and then you state the problem or the fact, the topics that you have chosen and the factors, and then ano yung mga research questions na possible mong itanong or you want to to know or to solve and then syempre ang pinaka ending nun or yung pinaka last statement mo yung possible na recommendation mo or yung, de, yung uh, aside from the recommendation mo dun kung paano masasolve yung problem of course the benefit also of your study so syempre um, uh, that can that, that can benefit the, the the parents kasi they'll check if if i-avoid ba nila yung mga anak nila sa Facebook kasi nga di ba yung Facebook likes pag mas mataas or paano kung mababa yung Facebook likes so mababa ba yung self-esteem okay 
So that can be uh, that can be one of the benefit or the advantage of that study. The research question should be written in declarative sentences. So keep keep the statement of the problem short and simple. Make sure that the statement of the problem reflects the research problem. Research questions in the aim of the study. So yun nga, kapag gumawa tayo ng objective, mas better nga kung isa lang yung objective natin para hindi magulo yung study natin. Okay? Hindi, yung, hindi to yung uh, activity or na like essay na paparanihin natin yung mga mga words natin. So, hindi yung nakakatulong kasi pag mas marami ka pang nilagay na, na words dyan, mas pinalago mo pa, mas marami ang itatanong sa'yo yung panelists. No, kung ano lang yung kailangan, kung ano lang yung um, dapat mong sabihin doon, then sa study mo, then yun lang na. Make it simple. Make it short and simple. Yeah. Um, practice. Okay. Okay, so just to wrap up, the statement of the problem provides context to the research problem. It's usually included in the introductory part of a research study. So a research questions are basis, are the basis of the statement of the problem. There are four main categories of research questions, namely descriptive, comparative, evaluative, and explanatory research questions. Okay, so we should use SMART in creating a quantitative research question. So it must be a relevant, specific, clear, analytical, and measurable. Okay, any questions with the statement of the problem? None? Okay, if none, Wala nang question? Okay, so if none, let's move on to uh, chapter three, lesson one, creating a conceptual framework and defining terms. Okay, so ito yung actually itong conceptual framework at yung mag-guide sa atin throughout our uh, preparing the study. Okay, so yan, one of the most challenging part is looking for the right conceptual framework for your study. Okay, so how can you best construct a conceptual framework of your research? Kasi parang hindi na natin makikita yung flow ng magiging research mo. So usually, ang mga tao, ang mga uh, researcher, ginagamit na lang nila is yung input, process, output na type of conceptual framework. Okay, so again, so at the end of this lesson, we should be able to construct a, a conceptual framework based on a research topic of interest and apply an appropriate definition of uh, for terms used in the study. Okay, so kapag merong mga unfamiliar words, um, yun, parang gumagawa ka ng glossary na tinatawag. Okay, so theoretical framework and conceptual framework. Ano kaya yung pinagkaiba at yung similarities nila? Okay, both will be the flow of your... Uh, usually kapag conceptual framework, dito mo pinapakita through image or visual kung ano yung magiging flow ng research mo. So usually, ang ginagamit ka ng researchers dito, mas effective daw kapag ang ginamit nating... Um, visual or graph is yung input, yung process, and then yung output. Ano kaya yung magiging input mo? Ano yung mga kailangan mo? Of course, you need the respondents, you need um, you need the questionnaire, 
and the process, ano yung magiging process mo, and then yung output. Okay, so of course, you are expecting the answers from the, the um, respondents. Yung theoretical framework mo, ayan, normally nakikita to sa uh, related, um, yung RRL mo, uh, related studies. Ayan. So, usually, ano to eh, um, graph din, na pwede, graph from other studies na pwede mong gamitin dahil related siya sa topic mo. Okay? So, I think at the end of this uh, sem, I think, yung i-check natin kung ano yung uh, usually na itsura ng mga thesis, ng mga, ng mga research. Okay? So, conceptual framework, first, an illustration of how the entire research process will be explored and explains the relationships of the concepts in the study. So, yun, um, yun, yun nga, better talaga na uh, input process output yung gamitin natin. Okay, so significance of the conceptual framework. So, uh, this will be your guide on how you're going to do your research. It okay? guides the researchers to construct the study according to their perspective, highlights the significance of the study. Okay, so parang in just one look, the readers will know what will be the flow of your study. Okay, so how can a conceptual framework benefit your research? Of course, magkakaroon ka ng flow, magkakaroon ka ng guide. Okay, so magkakaroon ka ng step-by-step, step, ano yung uunahin mo, and then ano ba yung ipaprioritize mo. So, yun, in just one look, in just one visual. Okay, so next, research frameworks. Actually, uh, mas better na if we'll use two frameworks in our study. First, the conceptual framework. Atin talaga to, original na gawa na talaga natin to. Well, the, the theoretical framework that can, that you can get this from other researchers. Yan, mga pioneer ng studies na yun. You can use that. Okay? So, normally yun nga, nakikita natin to sa RRL natin. Theoretical framework refers to the theory where the researcher based their study. Okay, so theoretical framework based on existing theory from other studies, just like what I have said, galing siya sa mga RRL natin, related study natin. This can be an image or graph. And usually graph talaga pag mga framework, uh, we will need to present it using graph. So ano yung, ano yung parang pinagmulan nung, nung pagsusolve ng problem na yun. Okay, so, ayan, dito rin natin kukunin yung mga possible questions natin eh. Ayan, so, applies to a wider range of ideas related to the study, evaluates the theory if it, is, if it applies to the research problem. So, while the conceptual framework, ayan, this is formulated by the researcher to explain different ideas related to the study. Kung baga, uh, ito yung original framework mo. So, iko dapat yung author nito. Well, yung theoretical framework from other existing study. Yan, narrower and more specific concept applicable to the study encourages theory development about new concepts. Yan, so, remember, a theoretical framework is based on established theory, whereas the conceptual framework is an illustration of the researcher's viewpoint of the study. Okay, so ayun yung pinagkaiba nila. Yung theoretical galing sa established ng study, yan galing siya sa ibang author, while the conceptual framework, ikaw yung magpa-formulate ito. So, hindi po pwedeng kunin yan sa internet. Dapat ikaw mismo yung gagawa niyan. Okay? So, how to construct a conceptual framework? Finalize the research topic. It's a topic that is based on your interest and academic strand. Number two, conduct a literature review. The literature review must be credible and scientific. Credible, uh, we should use, uh, uh, we should not use Wikipedia. Kasi na edit ng tao yun. So, much better if we're going to use a credible source. Yan, pwede siyang .gov instead of .com, .gov, .edu, .ph. You can use that. And then, much better kung book. And then, Mas better din kung, kung 
nakakolekta ng studies like yung existing research na and then meron kang authorization from the author to use that study as your guide and scientific. Okay, again, no, kapag uh, nagko-collect tayo ng mga RRL natin, we should not use Wikipedia or Google. No? So, pag uh, we're using internet, mas better na ang reliable source natin or yung link na kinukuhaan natin is .gov.edu.ph or anything na credible na agency na merong website. Ganun. Okay, so it is best to consult published journals for your research to ensure the studies are credible, recent, and up-to-date. So, mas, much better no, kung nakahanap tayo ng mga existing ng studies that we can relate our uh, topic or problem. So, to construct a conceptual framework number T, decide which variables are to be investigated. Distinguish the main variables to be studied and identify possible relationships based on the gathered data. So normally, hindi tayo actually, hindi tayo basta-basta rin nakakapag-decide ng variables. We, we should read more literature to know or to to defend no na ito talaga ito yung variable na ginagamit even from the other study. Okay? So hindi tayo pwedeng mag uh, Basta-basta lang gumamit ng mga variables or factors. Dapat meron tayong backup na, na itong ginamit nating variables have been used even from the other studies or established ng studies. Okay, so again, pag dinefend natin yung variables natin, yun, pabukulatin mo lang sila ng RRL, then uh, doon na nakalagay na ano yun, na um, reliable yung variables na pinili natin. Okay, construct the conceptual framework, create the conceptual framework using the related studies, main variables, and research process must be emphasized. Ayan, so yun nga, um, dahil na, na, na defend natin na tama yung variables na ginamit natin, so dun sa, sa conceptual framework natin, dapat makikita natin yung mga ginamit natin variables, or yung gagamitin natin variables. So what counts as a good conceptual framework. Okay, for example, the number of hours spent using social media, uh, we can use academic performance in school. Ayan, so next, the ambience of place, taste of food, service of staff, customer satisfaction. Actually, ano pa nga ito, parang kulang pa ito eh. Itong, um, itong conceptual framework na ito. Medyo kulang pa siya. So defining terms, yan. I think we already know what is defining terms. Pag merong mga uh, unfamiliar words, then ano tayo? Um, yan. Uh, nililist lang lang natin and then yung meaning nun. Okay, so do we have any question regarding conceptual framework and a theoretical framework?
Non, non. Okay, so next lesson two, wala tayong question. Okay, so after Okay, so lesson two, formulating a, a hypothesis of quantitative research. Okay, so how is forming hypothesis going to be important in helping you, you write your research? Okay, so I think, um, not I think, important siya, no? Kasi ito yung sinasolve natin problem at yung pinapatunayan natin sa study natin. Okay. So at the end of this study, we should be able to identify the types of quantitative research hypothesis and formulate research hypothesis for quantitative research. So how do you often discover whether your assumptions are right? Okay, so again, I think ang mga babayan mahilig mag-assume. Yung mga assumptions tayo na, na madalas tumatama. Okay. So, ano kadalas yung mga assumptions natin tama kayo? Gano kadalas? Okay, your assumptions about the study held in the research process. Okay, so yun, kapag nag, uh, may hypothesis tayo, when we say kasi hypothesis, para siyang assumptions, ayan, uh, parang ito yung result na ina-expect natin at the end of this study. A research hypothesis is a tentative proposition or parang uh, a tentative answer, a tentative um, result about the relationship between two or more variables. Normally, kapag nag-create tayo ng hypothesis, lagi tayong negative. Okay, so parang kubaga, um, there is no relationship between, the, between these two variables. There is no laging negative. Kumbaga, we are of predicting na walang relasyon kung two variables. Ganun. Usually, ganun yung ginagamit when we use, uh, we, and we, when we are constructing hypotheses. Always take into consideration the research design of your study before formulating the hypothesis. Okay, so a hy hypothesis should be falsible, falsifiable. The research hypothesis must be capable of being disproved, okay? So we are using negative tone. And a uh, uh, hypothesis should be predictable. A hypothesis must be able to predict relationships among two or more variables. A hypothesis should be simple and specific. This is to prevent the readers from being misled and to keep them from thinking of the ideas that are not relevant to the study. Okay, so yun nga, we are using hypothesis, kumbaga nagko-conclude na tayo um, na dapat yung conclusion natin must be simple and specific, kumbaga iisa lang yung direction, so para yung mga readers hindi na sila mag-iisip pa ng other factors na hindi naman relevant to the study. So how important is the literature review in the formulating the research hypothesis? So a hypothesis should be based on an existing body of knowledge. Kumbaga, um, uh, usually, pwede tayong mag-base ng hypothesis natin from other study or existing literature na. And then, re-replace lang natin ng um, siguro dependent uh, yeah, dependent variables. 
the research the research should investigate topics that are yet to be explored in order to address research gaps. Yeah. So it should be capable of being operationally defined. And the research study must be testable. It will not be considered as empirical without being tested. Usually, para ma, para ma check if testable siya, gumag, um, um, magre-relay yung mga researcher to the statistician just to check kung testable ba itong study natin. Okay, so should be reflective of the research problem. The argument of the purpose and variables of the study should be clearly expressed in the hypothesis. Okay, so hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng mga other variables in our questionnaire na hindi naman included sa hypothesis natin. Okay, so usually kung ilan yung objectives natin, um, ganun din kadami yung, uh, yung hypothesis natin, usually. Yan. Or mas madami ng, oh tama, ganun. Kung gano'n kadami yung objectives natin, usually ganun din kadami yung hypothesis natin. Kung baga may objective tayo, kinakonvert natin siya into conclusion that is negative. Okay, so for example, we want to check the, uh, yung parang objective natin is to know the, this study aims to know the effect of sunlight to the plant. Okay. Our hypothesis can be uh, there is no effect, uh, the sunlight has no effect to the growth of the plant. Ganon. And we, uh, we, we convert our objective to a negative tone or a negative conclusion. Pero you can use positive, pero normally talaga negative yung ginagamit. Yeah. Yeah. So this is prediction. This is parang conclusion na siya. Yeah. So how to formulate a good research hypothesis, state the research problem explicitly. The main arguments of the research study must be highlighted in the hypothesis. So consider the if and then statement in writing the hypothesis. This format explicitly states an assumption and the probable result of the research problem. And define the variables to be studied. And dapat may variables na tayo. It is important to set the boundaries of the variable being studied, most especially if an empirical study. Okay, so we have null and uh, alter alternative. Usually, ano to eh, laging null yung ginagamit natin. Okay, so there is no relationship or no difference between variables. Okay, so kapag... Um, dito kapag ang lalabas lang naman dyan is sa, sa, sa statistic is accept or reject the hypothesis. Kapag accept, ibig sabihin wala talagang relasyon yung dalawang variable. Kapag uh, rejected, so merong rela relationship between two variables. Yan. Kapag ito namin sinasabi sinasabi natin positive tone, the alternative hypothesis, o kung baga ito namin yung positive tone, and there is a relationship or difference between the variables. Yeah, but usually, we use null hypothesis. Laging no, I guess a negative. And yung alternative naman laging, um, uh, parang laging positive. Yeah, so for example, there is no relationship between customer satisfaction and the quality of the product. Well, the alternative hypothesis, there is a relationship between customer satisfaction and the quality of the product. Another Nalhapa hypothesis, there is no difference between uh, anxiety stress level under Terra B. And alternative naman, there is a difference between anxiety and stress level under Terra B. So what do you think are the difference between hypothesis and a qualitative and quantitative? Yeah. So the two types of alternative hypothesis, directional hypothesis, variables being examined differ in a particular direction. While in non-direction naman, variables are being examined differ but have no determined um, direction. Yeah. So for example, in directional, more millennials prefer remote and home-based work 
then those belong to Generation Z X. Parang mga boomer to eh, Generation X. Millennial kasi Y. Tapos yung tayo naman, ano na kayo, Generation Z. Millennials and Generation X professionals prefer remote and home-based work differently. Okay, remember, an alternative hypothesis can be categorized as directional suggesting specific direction, while the non-directional no specific direction method. Yeah, so ito yung mga possible results, no? The null hypothesis was rejected when it is true. The null hypothesis was not rejected when it is false. And parang mga accept lang yan and um, rejected. Okay, so do we have any question, guys, before we end this discussion? Maka three topics na lang tayo. May question pa, guys, before we end? Okay, so I think none. None. So don't worry, uh, siguro at the end of this semester, magpapakita ako ng study so we can better understand yung mga sinasabi dito, mga hypothesis, uh, conceptual framework. Kasi, um, as expected, gagamitin nyo talaga to in, in your college. So better na naintindihan natin siya. Okay, so if you have no question, we can now dismiss. Thank you, everyone. Happy weekends to some. Okay, bye. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, po. Thank you, bye, po, ma'am. Ma thank you, po, ma'am. Bye. Thank you, po. Mm-hmm.